Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for June 14th, 2024. Well, we have kind of an interesting market setting up here this morning, and probably a bit of a surprise to a lot of folks with uh, futures um, looking sharply lower and looking across some of the news details it would be a little bit difficult to see what in the world is going on but let's see if we can dig into this a little bit and uh, first off let's start with what happened overnight if we take a look at asian markets now asian markets mostly higher um, last night with australia and hong kong down in Hong Kong is that tech heavy sector down um, 0.94 percent or 170 points last night and um, we did get a decision from the Bank of Japan the Bank of Japan decided to leave their interest rates flat it was highly anticipated that they were going to raise interest rates but instead what they're talking about doing is buying up their own bonds in a massive quantity they're talking about purchasing somewhere between about 4.8 and 7 trillion in bonds per month um, over in japan trying to stabilize and improve the yen which is very very weak um, overall against currencies so watching that closely and interestingly enough um, that seems to be having um, an, a, quite an effect on the u.s dollar here this morning and we'll talk about that as well let's take a look at european markets now european markets are decidedly bearish this morning we have the cac falling substantially here today there is some concern um here's a cac chart there is some concern um about the election and what's happening over there and really uh, driving France lower here this morning. So we'll want to be keeping a close eye on that because that is drawing the rest of Europe sharply lower. The DAX is down by 1.25%, while the CAC falling a substantial 2.33%, um, showing a little bit of concern over there. So um, taking a look at the US futures, we have quite a reversal from that bounce back up yesterday with the Dow futures at the moment being down 300 points. Um, S&P 500 futures are down 27.75 uh, here at the moment. And NASDAQ futures are trading about uh, 48 points lower or 0.24% lower here this morning. If we take a look at our oil this morning well we've got oil just slightly lower here at the moment if we take a look at xle we've continued in this downside trend not looking so good there on oil but we've got brent being up just ever so slightly and then we've got natural gas um, ung um, natural gas or boil take a look at boil um, we have those whoops we have those holding in pretty interesting patterns here in the market uh, where we could hold that upside trend and they're trying trying to stay bullish with natural gas just slightly higher if we take a look at precious metals this is an interesting thing happening today precious metals are up sharply this morning we've got gold up $28.20 an ounce at this very second in the futures market. We've got silver up substantially here as well. We've got uh, copper um, moving up a little bit. Palladium is still lower, but platinum is making a reversal here this morning. So what's interesting is we're seeing a rising dollar. At the same time, we're seeing some um, yeah, interesting um, um reversal here in futures on precious metals and we can see here in GLD 
showing a pre-market bounce off of this support area. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Very interesting what's going on here this morning. Um, also, at the same time, which is um, absolutely bizarre, we are seeing um, treasury yields pulling back. The treasury yields are falling. There seems to be a pretty big surge into treasuries. Take a look at TLT continuing to stretch here to the upside, um, moving strongly. Um, and there may be some reason for that. We are starting to hear, well, not starting to hear, um, there's a story out from Zero Hedge that um, the entire BLS report is, well, wrong. Um, the books have been absolutely cooked, apparently, um, in the story that um, not only are we not seeing job growth, but the actual numbers of US um, based folks getting jobs is virtually zero. That nine million, there is a nine million dollar difference in the real numbers than what we're being told by the BLS. So that may be spurring this buying in bonds because that would suggest if that is true, if that number is that cooked, well, we're probably headed into recession and in a big way. And there's a protection trade coming in here, um, uh, I would guess, uh, from the major banks coming in strongly. So we'll have to keep a close eye on that today. Something um, Something's not um, coinciding here like you would normally expect. Um, we also have cryptos rebounding here this morning. Um, they were sharply lower yesterday, but pushing up only 150 points on Bitcoin. But we've got a little bit of mix here in on the cryptos. Our bond yields, we got the two year bond yield this morning at 4.67%, the 10 year at 420 in the 30 year at 4.35%. So although we've kind of got um, a day that would normally be a little bit um, um, quieter because we got past all of our inflation data, now there's this all this uncertainty um, uh, popping up here in the market, creating uh, quite a little bit of volatility in the pre-market futures. So what does all that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. Let's uh, take a look at some of these stocks and see if we can gain a little bit of information about how we may want to approach the market for today. And remember, let's shake off that bias here and really take a look at the charts for what they are, not for what we want them to be. Well, first off, as you guys know, I've been talking about this concern of this lower high possibility here in the chart. And yesterday we did kind of confirm um, that uh, big ugly candle here in the chart by following through to the downside. Now, at the end of the day, after um, European markets had closed, we started to rally back up a little bit. But now you can see this morning, we have a pretty substantial gap down setting up. We'll be gapping below um, both of these tails um, that we had yesterday pushing down. And I would suggest that we may come down into here um, on this gap um, pulling back into here and possibly even coming down into these lows if the bears continue to find that inspiration today. And it is geo, uh, not, not geopolitical, but it, it, it's coming. This stress is coming from um, other countries and really some interesting shifts in currency. Now, if we take a look, um, if the bulls were to find inspiration, then it bounce back up. We want to test this resistance level in the chart. And then, of course, if we can break back through 
through there, then we would start looking up here to yesterday's close and maybe pushing on up towards some of these resistance levels in the chart and of course that downtrend. So we'll want to watch that pretty closely. Now if we take a look at a quick look at the SPY, the SPY also reversing here um, overnight and um, we're going to open probably lower than our tail if, if we were to open right now anyway we would open lower than the tail of yesterday so a um, little bit of concern here this morning particularly if we were to get a gap down here this morning if we were to gap lower here today um, this might be looked at as an island reversal pattern if that were the case so a little bit of concern may be building here uh, this morning um, for those folks who jumped back in and purchased yesterday we'll want to watch that carefully if the bears were to continue to push falling into this gap would suggest that possibility that we could come all the way back down and maybe fill that gap and if that's all we do no big problem no big worries Breaking down below there would be a little bit of concern. That would bring us back to our trend in this price support. And again, if that's as far as it goes, probably no worries. But if we were to go beyond that point, there's going to be um, a, a really probably a change in concern in the market and we could really see volatility begin to pick up from there now if the bulls find in um, inspiration today then there's every reason to believe the way um, the spy and the qqq have been acting that this could reverse come right back up and remember anything above here we've got blue skies above because yesterday despite the volatility we ended up with a new record high close in the spy and if we take a look at the QQQ, QQQ doing the same, um, we pushed down there a little bit. We did close, uh, almost close the gap of yesterday's gap up and then pushed back up to a new record high close. Now we're showing just a little bit of bearishness here in the QQQ. One thing that was interesting yesterday is we're really diminishing the number of stocks holding the market up. Um, we were uh, down to just, uh, you know, the MAG-7 is now kind of the MAG-5. Um, very few um, stocks actually moving to the upside yesterday, uh, performing and pushing uh, both the SPY and QQQ higher in those tech giants. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. If the bears were to continue to find inspiration here today, well, first off, maybe a closing of this gap completely. Then checking out the lower side of that candle would probably raise a little bit of concern, but where people would, might start to feel a little bit of pressure here because we're so uh, piled into just a very small number of companies that a failure through that support uh, in a gap fill would be a little bit painful and maybe raise some concern in some of those folks that are over um, allocated in um, those big tech firms. Now beyond that point we would look down here and probably we'd be looking at testing this upside trend and again if that's all we do probably not a major concern um, there'd be a little fear come up in the market but probably not a major concern if we hold that support it'd be breaking down below there where we would really start to feel some pressure. Now if the bulls um, find inspiration today they could reverse this so quick with just a few stocks rising they could reverse this really quick and we could see some new highs and blue sky highs in the qqq now iwm is telling us a very different story where we failed um, uh, on this big gap up, we failed to hold um, this. We reacted negatively to this downtrend and we completely filled that gap. And although we did rally back up yesterday to grab a hold of that price support, you can see we're gapping down below that area this morning substantially. As a matter of fact, we're coming into some lows here in that chart. So we'll have to watch that pretty closely here if this makes a new low or well, that confirms this downtrend here in iwm a lower high followed by a lower low is a confirmation of a downtrend and we would start looking for some price levels um, on lower here in the chart possibly even coming down into here 
So watch that carefully. Now, if the bulls were to find that inspiration, if we were to bounce, and, and there's a reason that we could because we're kind of in an oversold condition here in um, T2122. We'll look at that in just a second. But watch this carefully. If this were to bounce in here, then we'd start looking at this resistance here in the chart to serve once again. And then we'd see if we could break on through checking out these um, candles just above. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX yesterday was showing us no fear at all. We gapped up here just a little bit, and then as the rally in the afternoon came on, we took away all that fear, and we're down here in this very complacent area. Notice we're below 12 handles here in the VIX. We certainly could retest these lows here, and we're continuing to follow this, follow this downtrend. So right now, U.S. seems to have no fear, but perhaps some of this change that's happening here and some of this realization that maybe we haven't been getting the truth and um, the data points here could really start to change sentiment so we'll have to keep a close eye on that today our t2122 indicator um, is back down here in our uh, bullish reversal zone and yesterday we had actually drifted below this area down in here um, on that selling in the market and then by the end of the day we push back up to be just above that bullish zone so with the bears pushing this morning we can see that possibility we we're moving a pretty good clip here this morning in the dow futures anyway to the downside if we were to push down into here that would be quite interesting um, um, in the market this morning as a uh, um, and it's an oversold condition and we'd be looking for a bounce now if the bulls were to find that inspiration keep in mind we've opened up a very large opportunity here to the upside and this is just one of the things that i continue to talk about we've been masking what's really been happening in the market because we've got a very tiny group of stocks that are capable of holding the entire market up and we have been seeing uh, many more stocks selling than we have been going up. And of course, that is giving a false impression of the indexes if you're not paying very, very close attention to uh, the fact that leadership in this market is dwindled down to just maybe a handful of stocks. If we take a look at our T2108, our T2108 percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average, even with the rally back up yesterday, you can see that we still had more stocks selling or slipping below their 40 day moving average than going up yesterday. And unfortunately, um, that is continuing this morning with, with this potential gap down. We could see a substantial move lower here in T2108, at least at the beginning of the day. So watch that carefully. And then T2107, also, we got that impression that, oh, everything's going to rebound and looking really, really good. And well, doggone it, we still had more stocks slipping below their 200 day moving average yesterday and at one point in time we were down here we were below these lows and then the rally back up in the afternoon picked us back up to hold that space but um, this morning with a gap down here we're likely to see us down here testing this 50 percent area of the t2107 meaning about half the stocks are um, hanging on to their 200 day moving average half the stocks are below that's not a good bullish sign for the market and again we've been getting this impression that everything is very very bullish in the spy and the qqq but it is just a few stocks making that happen now if we take a look at our t2101 this should be a little bit of a concern as we continue to set new record highs in the spy and the qqq we're not getting much for breadth here um, and remember, the the sell side of the market was the stronger side of the market yesterday. So any breath improvement we really need to attribute to the upside. But honestly, it was just flat on the day. 
um, as we continue to stretch the SPY and QQQ to new record highs. A very interesting market. Um, let's take a look at um, our economic calendar here for today. And our economic calendar, we don't have a whole lot on here today, but of course they can be market moving import and export prices. They're looking for import prices to come in at 0.0, .0 a decline from the 0.9, quite a change there. We're looking at um, import uh, prices year over year uh, going to 1.5%. Uh, from 1.1 and then we've only they're only giving us an estimate on the export prices and that's coming in at 0, 0.0 so we'll see how that actually comes in here before the bell after that at 10 a.m. Eastern we're gonna have the consumer sentiment numbers they're expecting that sentiment to run up to 73.0 um, this this recently declined so we'll want to watch this per pretty closely I don't think the consumers are as happy as um, we would like to see them in this market. As a matter of fact, I think the consumers are feeling a lot of pressure and pain. And I've been saying that for a while that, and, and these numbers just haven't been uh, playing out um, that way, showing all of this strength and jobs. Well, now we're finding out maybe all of that's a lie. We'll see. Now, if we take a look, um, Baker Hughes rig count, and then we've got a couple of Fed speakers in here this afternoon that we'll want to be paying attention to. Of course, Cook will be um, after the bell. No worries there. Goals may cut coming in before we close out the day. Looking at our earnings calendar today, we have absolutely zero. We have no confirmed earnings reports for today. So we'll want to be uh, watching that uh, closely. We, that's going to be a little bit of a problem for inspiration here overall. So keep a close eye on that. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor and click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. it means the world to me. Um, so... Thank you um, once again. And for those folks who share these videos out on your social media feed, thank you so much. And um, just a big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel through the Buy Me a Coffee link that you'll find just below the title of the video. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Let's take a look at these um, uh, some of these stocks that could be setting up. And remember, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence and be very, very careful in this market because we've got some very interesting things starting to occur here. So first off, let's take a look at UUP, representation of the U.S. dollar in here um, it's the dollar ETF and you can see um, popping up this morning maybe starting to fade back here just a little bit in the pre-market but we have that possibility of a breakout up here on the US dollar now strengthening dollars would typically say commodity prices are going to weaken but very interesting this morning as I mentioned before we've got gold popping up here pretty substantially now it has pulled back when, from uh, my first conversation about it when I started the video it's now at 2470 in the gold futures but still trying to show some bullishness so watch this carefully a break of this downtrend if this were to hold notice that's a little teeny tiny higher low if this were to hold and pop through there may be a reason to be looking at gold and silver if we are um, going to be fearful um, about something um, in Europe or fearful about the fact of recession because we haven't been getting um, maybe the truth on um, the jobless uh, or, or job situation here in the United States. So um, interesting, um, interesting dynamics. And I am not exactly sure how this is going to perform. And because I've not seen something quite like this, this is um, this is very odd. 
um, on uh, what's happening here right now, uh, seeing a gold and silver surge higher as we continue to see um, those uh, bond yields pulling back. And yet we have um, a bond, the 20 year treasury is surging here this morning, uh, breaking out, moving higher. Um, as you guys know, I have a bias on this. I'm holding uh, TLT. I also have TLT hedged here. I will be looking uh, for the next lower high in here to be buying more TLT. Um, at the same time, we typically see commodities pull back. Well, UNG continues to hold in here pretty well. Now, we've created a bit of a double top in here, and that's certainly always something to pay attention to. But I sure like the way we're trending, and this pullback, at least at this point, is not really gaining a whole bunch of energy. So if this were to hold in here, then I'd be looking for that next opportunity for UNG to try and pop on through that resistance in the chart. So watch that one carefully here. Um, very interesting uh, patterns here. Now, let's take a look at um, XLY. XLY, I mentioned yesterday to the folks of RWO, they were showing quite a little bit of strength here in that XLY, but take a look at what's happening in the pre-market here this morning. Big reversal here. There seems to be some kind of shift in the market where there's an uncertainty underlying that has crept up and a real concern in some places here that we could get some major shifts. But watch that carefully. These are those consumer discretionary items really pulling back here this morning in the pre-market watch that closely because there have been some of those stocks looking really really good um, so take a look at that take a look at um, utilities here now utilities have been pulling back but we're starting to see some of those stocks um, making a move to the upside again take a look at southern company nice little hold of a higher low um, look for that opportunity if some of these um, continue to push on to the upside Watch some of these resistance levels. Uh, very interesting uh, charts to be sure in there. Take a look at Walmart. Walmart pulled back to this trend. Now notice we've kind of slipped past our trend here. I'm going to move that out of the way. We're still, we're kind of looking for our next potential move. But I got to tell you, this nice resting pullback that held support, nice push in here. I'd be watching a break um, of this candle, I think. Any push back above this area here might be that next surge to the upside there in Walmart. I would keep a close eye on that. But there's a mix of data in here as well. Take a look at Costco. Costco making this nice little resting consolidation here could be setting up for that upside move, but we're certainly not seeing that in Target. Target showing a bearish pattern here and a possible short. So while we have some retail looking good, we also have some retail in here not looking so healthy at all and showing us some concerns of lower highs and things like that here in the market. So very interesting on that mix here um, that we're seeing. Now, take a look at gambling. Boy, we are, are really doing uh, nicely here on Penn National. A break of this downtrend, pushing on up through some resistance. Any rest or pullback in here, I think would set up that next opportunity in uh, Penn National. Watch that. We like um, um, CZR. CZR um, made that break out of resistance up here and now resting back towards support and trend, I would be keeping an eye on CZR as well. So watch some of those um, stocks closely here today. So guys, this is a really interesting day. Um, and I would recommend you go take a look at that story out on Zero Hedge. Um, they are showing some potentials here that are remarkable. First off, um, the, establish, the uh, establishment survey here, the BLS establishment survey, um, a very big different, uh, a very big change from the household survey. Um, and it's showing just this massive 9 million um, job gap um, 
I don't know if that's part of what's happening today, this concern, but there really is something creeping up. Zero Hedge also um, created a chart here, very interesting. Let me see if I can scale this in um, to view here for everyone. But Zero Hedge, um, what they did is they stripped out the um, the folks that are working multiple jobs. They stripped that out because we're hearing that the jobs are too tight, but what we're hearing is there's folks out there that to make ends meet, meet are working multiple part-time jobs to uh, make up the difference. And what they're showing here in this, um, the establishment is suggesting um, 272,000 jobs um, were created um, but the household number stripping those out is showing an actual a negative um, in those numbers. So very big difference here. And that might mean that we have um, a recession on the horizon here. Um, the other one that is really kind of shocking, I think, is the birth death model. And you probably heard some conversation about that, but this birth death model is way out of whack and um, they're saying uh, since April 23, 56% of all jobs, 1.9 million jobs in here, were added in from the birth debt rate calculation and not real. Um, they, don't, they don't exist. So uh, again, I don't know if any of this is true, I don't know um, what this is going to mean um, overall, but we should be paying very, very close attention to this if we're getting um, arbitrary numbers out of the Fed. There's always been you know, that conspiracy of, oh, the government never tells us the truth, but this is really starting to, um, to uh, show us some major problems here and could create this massive exposure um, overall where we really could be slipping into recession while we're getting the impression from the government that everything is great, the jobs are great, growth is great, maybe not. So um, watch this pretty carefully here as we progress um, today to see if this picks up in any of the conversation, if there's any other places out there that really start picking up this story. You guys take care, have a wonderful day, and more importantly, have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Wish you all the very, very best.